Welcome to Biology My Passion. I am Saumya Harikrishna. We are learning the chapter Human Reproduction and today we will learn about fertilization process. So during coitus or intercourse or we call it as copulation, the male ejaculates his sperm or semen into the vagina of the female. That process of transfer of semen or sperm into the vagina is called a insemination. Large number of sperms are released during ejaculation that is around 300 to 400 million sperms. A number of them will be demobilized or they are eaten away. A number of them become functional. The functional sperms will now undergo a process called a capacitation because initially the sperm is not able to fertilize the ovum but only after capacitation it can fertilize an ovum. Capacitation process involves three steps. There are certain inhibitory proteins present in the semen. It has to be inactivated. The weakening of the acrosome membrane uh, by dissolving the cholesterol present in it and mobilization of calcium ions into the sperm so that it can make a vigorous movement. That is the undulating movement of the sperm now turns into a whiplash like movement which will enable the sperm to reach the oviduct. So after capacitation, uh, it actually takes around 1 to 10 hours, but on an average 5 to 6 hours it will be complete. So now the sperm is in uh, ready or motile and it can go and fertilize an ova. So this sperm will now go through the uterus and it will reach the ova. There are different conditions or factors helping it. For example, first the swimming movement of the sperm itself will propel it towards the ova. And apart from that, the uterus also shows mild contraction. The fallopian tube and uterine wall makes mild contraction uh, when the female secretes oxytocin uh, during coitus. And also, the viscous secretions of the female reproductive tract also will help it to reach the ova. So, with the help of all these factors or conditions, the sperm will reach the ovum in 5 minutes. So, it can move 1.5 to 3 millimeter per minute. So, once it comes near the ovum, it can do the process of fertilization. So, before that, let me just tell you in brief the structure of ovum which we already discussed in the previous uh, video. That is, outermost layer is called a corona radiator. Inner to that, that is made up of follicular cells which are held together by hyaluronic acid. Then comes zona pellucida layer which is a glycoprotein membrane. Then the plasma membrane of the uh, ova. But in between there is a perivitelline space. Now this structure. When the sperm comes near it. First step is the sperm binding or the approximation of sperm to the ova. It has to reach the zona pellucida layer. So first it has to penetrate through the corona radiator. For that, there are certain enzymes helping in it. So, the acrosome wall is now weak. We already told during capacitation. Now, it will secrete two types of uh, enzymes. One is hyaluronidase, which can digest the hyaluronic acid, which is keeping the corona radiator follicle cells together. And also, corona penetrating enzyme. With the help of these two, the sperm will now be able to come and touch the zona pellucida layer. Zona pellucida layer has got certain receptive factors. Uh, they are called uh, fertilizing. That is ZP3, ZP2 are the common factors. Which are actually uh, competent to the anti-fertilizing present in the sperm. This is actually a compatibility reaction taking place between sperm and ovum to ensure that the right sperm is fertilizing. So uh, because of this, the sperm is now able to attach to the zona pellucida layer. Once the sperm comes inside the zona pellucida or comes in contact with the zona pellucida, acrosome reaction happens. Acrosome now dissolves or the membrane dissolves. As a result, all the enzymes inside come out which contains an enzyme called a acrosin or zona lysin enzyme which can digest the zona pellucida layer at the point of contact. Now, at the same time, there is an egg reaction means the egg will form a projection called a fertilization cone at the animal pole and this will enable the sperm head to come and attach with the membrane of that fertilization cone. Now sperm penetration, once these two come in contact, the membrane dissolves, both plasma membrane dissolve 
and now the contents of the head that is nucleus then the neck two centrioles were there if you remember and the middle piece that mitochondria all will be entering inside leaving the tail outside so the now the fertilization cone will also subside followed by that activation of ovum our secondary oocyte was arrested at a metaphase 2 stage now it will switch into the anaphase 2 stage because the sperm neck had a proximal centriole which will help in forming the spindle fibers for the uh, this to happen so anaphase and a uh, telophase as a result two daughter cells unequal division which will form the ootid or the female gamete which is now only forming and a second polar body now the ootid and uh, the sperm will come together the nucleus nuclear membrane of both the sperm means now only the contents have come inside the nuclear membranes of both dissolve and they come and fuse called a syncarion so it has it has become again diploid but now before that there is one more reaction once the first sperm comes inside there are certain cortical granules inside the plasma membrane of the ovum and that will be secreted out once the fertilization cone is produced sperm is inside the cortical granules will secrete certain uh, enzymes outside it will digest the fertilizing or the receptors of the other sperms as a result only one sperm can fertilize and now the membrane is not able to receive any more sperm because those factors are all dissolved now this membrane is called a fertilization membrane because it has already made become a zygote so this is the process of fertilization now we can call this as zygote and the zygote will immediately start its early mitotic division called a cleavage after fertilization the diploid cell that we are getting is the zygote the zygote will enter into the early mitotic division so here two differences are there we don't call this division as mitosis though it is a mitotic division functionally we call it as cleavage the second during mitotic division we get daughter cells here we don't call them daughter cells but we call them blastomeres because here there are a few fundamental differences from the normal mitosis first of all we know during mitosis once the daughter cells are formed they will undergo interphase where the growth occurs then only they will divide into the next two daughter cells but here there is no cell growth happening you can see in these pictures that the outermost layer zona pellucida remains the same whereas inside the cells are becoming smaller and smaller when their number is increasing that is one second their nucleocytoplasmic ratio increases so uh, in this cleavage first the zygote divides into two blastomeres two will become four blastomere four will become eight or 16 cell stage the 16 cell stage this happens from first second third fourth day the this 16 cell the solid mass will form that is called a morula morula is uh, in latin it means mulberry so it looks like a mulberry fruit so it is uh, called a morula but it is a solid mass of 16 cells during this time you have to remember that the zygote is moving from the ampullary region it is coming towards the uterus okay so now it is almost inside the uterus it passed the isthmus now by fifth day uh, this morula will now undergo some change where instead of a solid mass it becomes a, a partially hollow ball where a small cavity uh, emerges within by the rearrangement of cells thus once there is a cavity inside then it is called a blastula and this process of conversion of morula to blastula is called a blastulation here in mammals we call this as blastocyst the outermost layer of cells though it is a cross section you have to imagine it is a spherical structure with a one layer of cell outside okay so that is called as a trophoblast meanwhile the zona pellucida is disappearing now only trophoblast is the outermost one layer of cells and inside how can a cavity form the rest of the cells will undergo a kind of movement called a compaction they come closer and closer and closer together to make a compact mass of cells called a inner cell mass these inner cell mass cells are stem cells means they have the ability to develop into uh, different organs or uh, tissues now there is a cavity that is called a 
blasto C. So this is the structure which gets implanted inside the uterus. Means this structure will get attached to the wall of the uterus and that is called a implantation. So during implantation what happens? This blastocyst, this trophoblast will be applying a pressure on the uh, endometrial wall. During that time endometrial wall is also proliferating. So as a result it proliferates to the side but this is pushing inside. So the side will uh, proliferate more kind of making a depression into that the blastocyst will enter and the, trophy, the endometrial lining will grow over it. So suppose this is the wall, it is going inside and there is a covering over it. So now it's kind of laminated inside. Okay. So once it is inside, it enters into the next stage called the gastrula where the inner cell mass will now differentiate into three embryonic layers. If it is a triploblastic organism, that is outer ectoderm, middle mesoderm, and inner endoderm from which other organs start developing. So the attachment of this blastosis to the endometrium is called a implantation. Followed by that placenta formation will start. So mainly from ectoderm, central nervous system, retina, other neurons and many other parts uh, develop. Where from mesoderm we have the uh, heart, skin, connective tissues or muscles etc develop. From endoderm, our digestive system, respiratory system, all those structures develop. This process of formation of gastrula is called a gastrulation. We will learn about the fetal membranes and the placenta formation in the next video. So, uh, please like, share and subscribe to my channel, Biology My Passion. Thank you for watching.